What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are going to be talking about nicknames. Now in basketball, many players' nicknames are iconic. Magic, Dr. J, Pistol Pete. We identify many NBA legends not by their real names, but by the nicknames that the fans or media or family gave them. And so in this video, I took seven NBA legends and I traced the origin of their nicknames. And so enough of me talking, here are how seven NBA legends got their famous nicknames. Number seven, Charles Barkley. Standing at six foot four inches, Charles Barkley could only be considered undersized for the power forward spot. But what he lacked in height, he more than made up for in weight. At times throughout his career, some said that Barkley was as wide as he was tall. This was especially true in his college career, where it was said that Chuck would routinely eat two large pepperoni pizzas a night. This incredible and unhealthy eating habit became well known throughout college basketball, and fans came up with hilarious ways to taunt Charles throughout games. At Kentucky, the fans threw empty pizza boxes onto the ground when Barkley's name was called during warm-ups. At Tennessee, a student dressed in a Domino's uniform approached him in the pregame warm-up line and tried to take his order. And at LSU, the fans actually delivered a pizza to him on the court. And thus, Charles Barkley was given the nickname the Round Mound of Rebound, which was the perfect way to describe a man who ate two pizzas a night, was overweight, and was still SEC Player of the Year and an eventual MVP and Hall of Famer in the NBA. In his preparation for life as a pro, Barkley cut down his weight by 40 pounds and eventually finished his career averaging almost 12 rebounds a night. When asked how he lost so much weight, Chuck simply said, I cut down to six meals a day. Number six, Paul Pierce. We know Paul Pierce as a world champion, a 10-time All-Star, and a future basketball Hall of Famer. But in 2001, Pierce was just in his third season as a pro and had never been named to an All-Star team or made the playoffs, which meant that he did not have the full respect of many of the other stars in the NBA at the time, until he took the court on March 13th, 2001 against the Los Angeles Lakers in the Staples Center. On this day, the Celtics lost by five, but Paul Pierce showed the world why he would become an eventual basketball basketball legend. He scored 42 points on just 19 shots from the field, dropping in baskets from all over the court. The Lakers were helpless to stop him, and after the game, Shaq had to let his approval be known. He grabbed a reporter and said, take this down. My name is Shaquille O'Neal, and Paul Pierce is the mother effing truth. The nickname stuck. From then on, Pierce was the truth. Number five, Kobe Bryant. By the end of his career, the Black Mamba nickname had become synonymous with Kobe Bryant. Brand. He has Black Mamba t-shirts, commercials, he even has a Black Mamba shoe. But perhaps the most impressive aspect of the Black Mamba nickname is the fact that Kobe Bryant gave it to himself. In almost every other instance in life, a person cannot give themselves a nickname. It seems forced, it seems lame. Nicknames are usually earned, given to you by your friends, family, fans, or the media. But Kobe gave himself the Black Mamba moniker. Using the new nickname to separate his two personalities at a time where he was really struggling in his personal life. Before the Black Mamba nickname, Kobe was going through a rough court case where he was accused of sexually assaulting a 19 year old girl. And so his Black Mamba persona was created to handle business on the court while his Kobe persona handled his real life problems off of it. The Black Mamba is one of the deadliest and fastest snakes in the world. Just two drops of venom from this snake can kill a person, which is fitting as Kobe is one of the greatest assassins on the court that the NBA has ever seen. The man finished his career with an MVP, five championships, and countless buzzer beaters. He was, by every definition, an on-court killer. Number four, Kevin Garnett. When the Minnesota Timberwolves drafted Kevin Garnett in the 1995 draft, they were well known for exactly one thing, being absolutely horrible at the game of basketball. At the time, the T-Wolves were a relatively new team in the NBA, and in their short six years before drafting KG, they had never won more than 30 games in a single NBA season. And then, enter Kevin Garnett. Almost immediately, KG changed the Timberwolves franchise. In just his second season, the team reached the playoffs for the first time and would continue to reach the playoffs for eight straight years. But still, early in Garnett's career, the Timberwolves roster had some serious problems, namely a lack of talent, which meant that the only 
only reason that fans of Minnesota were attending games was because of KG, who was the big ticket in town. A nickname that a Timberwolves commentator gave Garnett and a nickname that would stick with him for his entire career. Number three, Hakeem Olajuwon. Legend has it that Hakeem Olajuwon got his nickname the dream when, during a practice at the University of Houston, Hakeem rose so effortlessly for a dunk that a coach said, it looked like a dream, which is a great start to a nickname, but really the name stuck because of what Hakeem did after. Because as a center in the NBA, Hakeem Olajuwon was everything you could possibly ask for. His footwork was phenomenal, his defense was superb, his scoring around the basket was unmatched. For his career, Hakeem averaged 22 points, 11 rebounds, 3 blocks, and almost 2 steals a game while racking up several awards, including an MVP and 2 championship trophies. When asked if he could pick any player of all time to win him a basketball game not including himself, Michael Jordan picked Hakeem Olajuwon. In every aspect, Hakeem was a dream center, which is why his nickname followed him throughout his career. Number 2. Allen Iverson Looking back at the history of Allen Iverson's nickname, many people seem to have fond memories of the answer. Most people believe that Iverson sports his nickname because he was the answer to all of Philadelphia's problems. And indeed, when looking at the 76ers franchise, you can see that the team had a string of losing seasons before Iverson arrived. Then came Iverson, who eventually turned Philly's fortunes around Round, won the MVP and brought the 76ers to the NBA Finals before eventually losing to the Lakers. But here's the thing, the real history behind Iverson's nickname is a little more dark. Because in 2003, Allen Iverson was sued over his nickname by his longtime family friend Jameel Blackman. According to Blackman, he gave the Iversons financial support during Allen's high school years. Then, in June of 1994, the summer before AI left for college, Blackman came up with the nickname The Answer, declaring that Allen Iverson was going to be the answer to all of the NBA's problems. For coming up with this nickname, AI agreed to give Blackman 25% of whatever money he made off of The Answer nickname. And over the next several years, he continued to agree that he was going to give Blackman 25% of the future revenue from his nickname when he made it. But when the money eventually started coming in, Iverson did not give Blackman a single cent, which led to the lawsuit, a lawsuit that Iverson eventually won. As the judge decided that even though Blackman gave Iverson the nickname, it was AI himself that made the nickname worth millions of dollars through his play on the court, which is the answer Iverson wanted to hear. Okay, yeah, I regret saying that. And number one, Magic Johnson. Before he was a five-time champion, before he was a three-time MVP, before he was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, Magic Johnson was just a high school basketball player who went by the name of Irvin Johnson. But the name Irvin just didn't seem to fit. It was too ordinary, too normal. Already as a high school sophomore, Irvin Johnson had become a local legend, a larger-than-life figure on and off the basketball court. On the court, he already showed glimpses of his future greatness. He was flashy, he had a gift for finding the open man, and he put up ridiculous stats. Off the court, he was charismatic, charming, a person who everyone looked up to and wanted to be friends with. Which is why when sports writer Fred Stapley Jr. began to write a story about Irvin's incredible sophomore year in high school, Fred decided he needed to spice things up a bit. He needed an angle, he needed to give the kid a nickname. And he did, writing, You can't be Dr. J or the Big E, they're both taken. Can I call you magic? And with just a few words printed into a newspaper, Fred Stapley Jr. changed Irvin Johnson's life forever. Because the name Magic fit. In fact, it was perfect. Everything about Magic's game was like magic. The no-look passes, the fancy dribbling, the incredible finishes around the rim. Magic Johnson played the game in a way that no one had played it before, racking up countless awards and accolades along the way. But perhaps the most impressive thing that Magic did is live up to the nickname Magic Johnson. When people first started calling him Magic in high school, his dad and mom were not happy. His dad felt that it would be impossible for Magic to live up to a nickname with that much hype. While his mom thought the name sounded blasphemous, both of Magic's parents eventually changed their mind because, let's be honest, the nickname Magic is the greatest basketball nickname of all time. And so thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought in a lot of these players' cases, the backstory for their nicknames was actually pretty cool, especially the Magic Johnson quote. I don't know. 
when I heard that, it just kind of gave me chills. It's pretty awesome. I mean, I can't call you Dr. J. I can't call you the Big E. Can I call you Magic? I don't know. I just think that story is awesome. And if you're new to this channel, this is a basketball channel, so I make basketball content. I do lists like this. I look at what if scenarios. I look at basketball history. I do basketball conspiracies. So if you love basketball, I think you'll love this channel and I would love to have you subscribe. And to everyone who is already subscribed or just people that watch my videos, thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you for your nice comments. Thank you for everything. You know you mean the world to me and as always, have an awesome day, guys and girls and cue the music. I'm just kidding myself. Girls don't watch my videos. Wait.